Since the 1990s, marriage rates have decreased by approximately marriage rates have decreased by over 1 million marriages per year in the United States alone. As illustrated in this graph, in the year 1990, there were approximately 9.8 marriages per thousand people in the population, which in the year 2020 decreases by an astounding 5.1 per thousand. Consequently, this left both men and women with conflicts regarding mental health and financial status, as well as leaving a large percentage of children born with unmarried mothers or a single parent. These statistics draw to the idealization that marriage is no longer valued in American society. Researchers and psychologists have begun to investigate the causes behind this alarming statistic and have concluded that societal and cultural changes are one of the leading factors that play a role in the success in our relationships. Society and culture directly influence how, how we treat our relationships as well as ourselves, which gives rise to the question. Just hit slideshow again. You keep going, you're fine. You're fine. Which gives rise to the question, over the past 30 years, to what extent have pressures on premarital relationships in the US led to the decline of successful marriages? Good morning, my name is Avery Greenberg and I will be discussing how societal pressures are negatively affecting premarital relationships in the United States, which is contributing to the rapid decline in marriages. Society argues that their generalized and preconceived ideas about behaviors and traits that specific genders should or should not display. This is what we call gender stereotypes. Gender stereotypes for women include, but are not limited to, being nurturing, compassionate, gentle, concerned with personal needs, whereas men refer to being highly sexual, physically strong, never show weakness, and in control. A study conducted by the University of Duesto evaluated the correlation between emotional dependency and mental wellness between both partners in a premarital relationship. Results showed that females, results showed that females are expected to have mainly social needs and therefore they achieve greater intimacy in their relationships whereas men are expected to have representational needs, which include the need for approval or to please others. When these needs are not understood or met by the other partner in the relationship, room for misinterpretation and misunderstanding is made. Another popular idea created by stereotyping is pressuring men to be the emotionally strong partner in the relationship, which is taking a large toll on mental health and dependency. Culture has created the unconscious bias that men should not publicly display their negative emotions, more specifically ones of weakness. A survey conducted by an all-male social platform in 2016 evaluated that 55% of men said they feel comfortable crying in front of a woman and astoundingly 45% said they would not. When a man suppresses their emotions in the presence of a woman in a relationship, not only are they limiting the communication and connection between them and their partner, but they're bottling up all their negative emotions, which clearly cannot be healthy mentally. Men are silently suffering from anxiety and depression disorders, and even those who seek help from psychiatrists or therapists are often stigmatized as weak. When the traits and characteristics we unconsciously assign to each gender are taken to the extreme, conflict and tension are created. A study, a study published by the School of Psychology defined toxic masculinity as a constellation of socially aggressive traits that encourage homophobia, domination, devaluation of women, and masculine norms. In simpler terms, toxic masculinity offers men the perception that they are the dominant and more powerful gender. One of the behaviors this patriarchal ideal encourages is rape. Rape culture is drastically increasing as a result of this rough male behavior becoming normalized and considered masculine. A study conducted by the National Sexual Violence Research Center claims that one in five women in the United States completed, attempted, or experienced rape during their lifetime and out of those 30% of women experienced it for the first time between the ages of 11 and 17. When women are exposed to this act of disrespect at such a young age, their view on love, men, and relationships change. They begin to view themselves as a temporary pleasure to men or an acquaintance rather than a loving partner. The repercussions of this change follow women all the way through their teenage and adult years, posing many threats to the success of their future relationships Aside from the conflicts women encounter, men as well face challenges as a result of actions taken by the opposite gender. Feminism is a hot topic in our society today and is applauded and well supported, but rarely brought up in conversation as a negative thing. Just like toxic masculinity, toxic femininity or toxic feminism is a product of a patriarchal society or system that is the result of women's actions. 
Feminism, which has been a beneficial and effective social movement, is in danger of becoming repressive and toxic. The most modern form of feminism, also known as third wave feminism, has shifted the original focus of embracing femininity to focusing on male hatred and patronizing men as a whole. If modern feminism took action to incorporate men equality into feminism is, instead of assuming that men are threats to the movement, both genders could see positive outcomes. For example, men would begin to fight against toxic masculinity and become more open to feminism. Together, these results put to, could potentially restore what has been broken, the connection between men and women in society and healthier relationships would become more prevalent. These two images depict the shift of focus in feminism protests from the 1970s to the 2000s. Another negative factor that has increased over the past few decades in social media, over the last few decades, is social media and other platforms that feed into our insecurities and self-esteem. In 2016, two European psychologists conducted a study that proved a high degree of self-esteem is positively correlated with relationship satisfaction. As social media has absorbed itself into society today, the negative effects have become increasingly noticeable and trends that are destructive to our, um, destructive to our self-esteem and self-concept. One idea of this is known as the Finn ideal. The Finn ideal is a concept encouraging women to be unhealthily thin, which is motivated by media images. A young college student in 2006 claims, I think I have to please men if I want to get a date, if I want to be married, if I want anything. So how I appear to men is really my final goal. The student implies that in order to be in a relationship or viewed in a romantic way, she must fit into a certain body, which connects to the argument by proving when women do not feel confident in themselves, they will not pursue a romantic relationship. Society's voice voice is projected through platforms that we come in contact with every day and when we face these pressures and ideals that society accepts our self-esteem is negatively affected which diminishes the health of our relationships. Nelson Mandela, a Nobel Prize winner and a former South African president claims, I do not know that I could have done it had I been alone for together our determination was reinforced. We supported each other and gained strength from each other. Mandela implies that togetherness and dependency is essential to our individual well-being. Humans thrive when we are in a strong and healthy relationship with one another. This being said, we must reevaluate the aspects of our everyday lives that are threatening the health of our relationships so we can restore the value of love and marriage in the United States. Thank you. Do you have any questions? And Avery, I have two questions for you. First up. How did your research question evolve as you moved through the research process? So at first, my research question was going in the direction of how societal pressures are impacting mental health. Whereas when that changed, after I looked into my sources and dug deeper into my research, I evaluated that not only does it affect mental health, but it also dives deeper into measurements such as, as I studied marriage rates. So it changed from shifting from opinions and experiences of men and women to connecting to um, a statistic. Okay. And how does your conclusion respond to any of the other research that you examined? My conclusion, specifically the quote from Nelson Mandela, essentially discusses how important it is that we are connected to others and dependent in a romantic relationship or non-romantically and essentially that connected to my argument and my other sources because especially in my source on toxic feminism, it really dove deeper into how some extreme feminists rebuke men or having a relationship with a man because they feel that they could essentially um, take away from their individuality or their freedom of being a woman. 